Let's go. Ready? Yeah. So that was our discussion and review of the Justice League, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, and now we're going to hand out some awards. Some of these are sort of Razzie type awards. <laughs> And some of them are awards that we're giving out to uh, great moments of the film and good uh, performers. So let yeah, let's get right into it. Yeah, so the Academy Awards this year will be in April. So we're doing this in honor of that. Obviously, we had to modify it because we're only focusing on one movie. The other thing is because we love the genre so much, we went back through the history. Every award is named for someone who has had something to do with comic book filmmaking and adaptation through the years. And hopefully you get the parallels and the humor. So as Pablo said, some of these are very serious and like are very heartfelt. And some of these are very lighthearted and we're just having fun. So, yeah. um, all right, we do first one. So the first award that's going to be handed out tonight is the Scarlett Johansson Award for Best Scene Stealer in a Supporting Role. Now, why is the award named after Scar Scarlett Johansson? Because um, you made this point and it's a great point. Because in every scene that Scarlett Johansson, especially in action sequences, she's she she has the best action sequence. She's she's like the best in terms of her abilities and and what she does in that scene. Uh, is that what you were leaning towards? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she, yeah. So in every movie she's in, she is given something that is cooler than everyone else. Yes, yes, yes. So the nominees for this award is uh, Connie Nielsen. Uh, Joe Morton, uh, Jeremy Irons, and Junkie XL. All right, so this is actually why I think one of our most competitive categories. So I'm going to break this down a little bit, and Pablo as the winner, and he'll he'll defend the winner. So Connie Nielsen plays Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons. I have no idea why Connie Nielsen's career wasn't bigger than it was, given she obviously in Gladiator gained a claim 20 years ago. And she rocks this part. And I think with the Battle of the Amazons, she comes off as both very regal, very kind of caring of the other Amazons, very athletic and badass in the action that yeah. she does. I was glued to the screen every time she was on it. And I got to the end of it and said, again, if they do the Amazon series, she better be headlining it because there's no one else that can play that part. I was. Yeah. I thought she got one of the bigger upgrades from the theatrical version to this version. So that's why she's on the list. Uh, Joe Morton plays Silas Stone, Victor Stone's father. We got a much more fully developed version of that character, start to finish, and Joe Morton is never bad. He, is, yeah. he has been around for decades. He has yeah. never put a foot wrong in a role, and he didn't hear, so it was really nice to see him get a full load. Jeremy Irons is Alfred. I talked about a little bit earlier. It's just nice to see Alfred doing things. I like the idea of him as like the tech guru a little bit, building some you know equipment and helping Bruce kind of emotionally, but also tactically. Yeah. We saw that a little bit in BBS. I liked seeing that here. So nice to see him get more of a part. Junkie XL, I don't think he'll win, but I had to put him somewhere on the list. So Tom Holkenborg is his real name, this is his stage name. He wrote the music for this. And I thought the music was one of the bigger upgrades from theater to this. I thought he came up with a really heroic Justice League theme, which they leaned on. I liked the beats of the music, but his choices. And he even said that whatever his original score was for this movie, he scrapped it entirely. So uh -huh. what you heard in this was a completely new rendition of the music. And I thought he nailed it. I, I really like this style of it. And uh, I think there's some pretty re-listenable stuff in here. So, you know, he's not an actor, but I thought he contributed it, it, you know, to a lot of the scenes in a way. So those are our four nominees, one of our tightest categories. So Pablo, take it away. Who's in the envelope? So the winner of the Scarlett Johansson Award for Best Theme Sealer in the Supernal Role is Mr. Joe Morton. I have to say, the way I, he caught my, my, my attention, especially when he was told about his wife and then his son. The acting that he did there was, I think, uh, very heartfelt. And you understood why he decided to do what he did. And then his uh, recorded audio that he left for Victor Stone and explaining 
his abilities and what he is capable of doing, I thought was done phenomenally well. One of the most memorable um, parts in terms of explaining a, a, a hero's uh, abilities in a movie. And then his sacrifice, you know, what he left for the rest of the team to be able to do. And he sacrificed himself so that he can, you know, help them in a way that, you know, obviously he doesn't have the, the physical or, or, or talent of everyone else. And, but this was his last, uh, I guess, uh, show of support or assistance towards um, helping them out. So for me, uh, for, for us, we decided, you know, that like Joe Morton des deserves this honor of receiving that award. The, the Academy Awards usually opens with Best Supporting Actor, so Joe Morton takes home Snyder Cut Oscar number one. All right, number two is the Christopher Reeve and Linda Carter Award. And this goes to the character, the, the, the performance that is the best embodiment of the spirit of the comic book character. So I think the reason why we jumped to these two is whatever image you had in your head of what Superman or Wonder Woman were supposed to be, I think both Christopher Lee and Linda Carter from the second they appear on your screen, you kind of just, it just resonates. You're like, that is what I envisioned yeah. those characters to be. So this is not the necessarily the best performance. It's just what's the performance that evoked the classic comic portrayal in the most way. And our nominees are Gal Gadot for Wonder Woman and Mr. Ray Porter for Dark Side. Listen, Gal Gadot, again, that opening sequence of her doing her thing. And she, you know, Wonder Woman in the comics, she's fierce. She's a warrior. She's a fighter. And it definitely showed her throughout um, this film, especially in that opening sequence. Uh, Dark Side. It's like when you look at that film and you see Dark Side, you're like, that's Dark Side. <laughs> Especially with the visions that you see uh, with the Omega Beans from from uh, Ray Fisher, Cyborg, when he when he's plugged into the the Superman ship. One thing that was dope to me with Dark Side is when he put his hand on Superman's shoulder. Yeah. That was like, it wasn't, Darkseid doesn't aim to always fight. He he aims to use you in the best way he can possibly can. And if you if you don't want to do it, then okay, I got to go head to head with you. So that scene for me was dope. So, and that's something I think Darkseid would do. So the award goes to Ryan. It goes to Darkseid. Yeah. I, I think, I Zack Snyder has a penchant for, as we've talked about, having a lot of ideas, changes to characters, pushes the envelope. I think it was significant and not a coincidence that he did not mess with Darkseid's appearance. He did not mess with his voice. He did not mess with his motivations and what he's looking for. This really was- And his presence, in a, yeah. In a teased form, this was Darkseid, straight yeah. out of the comics. And yeah. the stuff he does physically, even if it's only imagined, really looks like dark side yeah. i was incredibly impressed it it definitely made me feel kind of sad that we won't get to see more of that character at least because i think people always you know he was invented before thanos but obviously we saw thanos on screen like i think this character would have been different enough that it would have been just as interesting and yes. i think he had he hit he had hit on the interpretation now i do have to say it's funny that with gal gadot you go back to when she was cast there was outcry, there was doubt. Is she strong enough? Is she big enough? And I think it says a lot that five, six years later, here we are saying, I mean, Gal is everything that you would think Wonder Woman should be, you know, both physically, but also in the moments where she's telling a little girl, you know, you can do what you want and she's inspiring Victor Stone to join the team. So yeah, this again was a very tough choice, but I just couldn't get over how much Dark Side really looked yeah. and sounded like I imagined Dark Side to be. So yeah. Kit Porter is Dark Side gets the Christopher Reeve and Linda Carter Award for Best Embodiment of Spirit of the Comic Book Character. All right, Snyder Cut Oscar number three is... This award was was kind of funny. Because um, <laughs> I spent my time looking at him like, okay, well, okay, let me let me hear this. Um, 
this is the Elizabeth Olsen Award for didn't that character have an accent? So, uh, which is of course a nod to Wanda Maximoff. Also, has an accent. Oh, go ahead. Also, um, can you? I don't. I, I don't know how people miss this. Um, Princess Leia. Yeah, good call. <laughs> so, yeah, good call. <laughs> so. This goes out to that, uh, 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 those two of the um, um, performances where- Elizabeth Olsen's got to the point where they even made fun of it in a meta way in WandaVision. They're like, what happened to your accent? So exactly. had an accent, didn't have an accent, had an accent, didn't have an accent. So that's where this award came from. And there's only one nominee for this. Yeah, Amber Heard. Amber, this award goes to Amber Heard. One moment she has it, and then this, the next moment you're like trying to see, you, you're almost like, where did the accent go? So it goes to Amber Heard. Even though it I don't, goes, I don't. Amber, do you it think? was crazy because now that we've seen Aquaman, where James Wan gives her bright red hair, she's got her American accent. She's kind of like an almost like an '80s punk like rocker a little bit in that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. then in this movie, she's trying really hard to sound like British royalty. Yeah, yeah. It was jarring to me, <laughs> jarring to where I was like, "What? This makes no sense." Yeah, and yeah. And it was really weird. And I gotta say. I think James Wan did it better. I, I'm glad that they went with that because this did not sound yeah. right or great, yeah. especially when Willem Dafoe was, he was using his Willem Dafoe voice. He was yeah. American accent. Yeah. I didn't get it. It, it. it threw me for a loop to where like, I, I went back and watched it again. I'm like, did I just hear that correctly? <laughs> oh, wait, no. So Amber Heard, that Elizabeth Olsen Award, didn't that character have an accent? Yeah, so Amber Heard gets that uh, nod for this uh, award. The next award, uh, Brian? It's the Michael Keaton Award for most memorable line. And this is in reference, of course, to 1989, Tim Burton's introduction to Batman in the very first scene where he apprehends the thugs and he says, <laughs> yeah. And that line has stuck, I think, with a lot Forever. of people for years. It was included in Christian Bale's interpretation. It was, par it's been parodied a lot. That's yes. the other reason I think it's most memorable. It pops up everywhere in comedies. Like if you ever seen Neighbors, they actually have an exchange about it. It's on SNL. It pops up everywhere. So yeah. that's why we came up with the award for Michael Keaton. Also, we didn't feel like this made, we had to get Michael Keaton in somewhere because he's been one of the legendary contributors to the genre. So we went with this. And this movie wasn't really a one-liners movie, Pablo. So this was a little bit tough, but I know we have a couple of uh, nominees and I'll, I'll, I'll let you read them off and, and, and let, let people know who the winner is. Cause I think you, you made the point and, and I'll let you, let you kind of close okay. it on this one. Okay. So the three nominees um, was uh, Victor Stone's F the world. Um, who said not impressed? Superman when he shows up and takes the ax on the shoulder and is like not impressed to step away. Really? I, I, I forgot that. Um, and then it's in the epilogue uh, scene uh, where Batman says, when I kill you and I will effing kill you. Uh, those are the three nominees um, for most memorable line. Um, and we spoke about it and the award goes to, and this is, again, this is not a, a good award. This is, this is just the most memorable line. And it is Batman's in the epilogue saying, when I kill you, I will effing kill you. That goes to that uh, line in the, in the movie. The reason why we chose this, chose this is because for me, Batman doesn't talk like that. And I remember it because it's not a line that we haven't heard before i just wouldn't imagine batman saying something like this and relishing in the fact that he will do this you know especially when when he talks about harley quinn um making him promise that to, to do this for her so that that line sort of threw me off guard um and yeah that's why this is one of the most memorable um this is the most memorable line of that film you your thoughts? Interestingly, the the other candidate for this didn't make the final cut, and it probably was the Joker saying, "We live in a society." 
the trailer. That might have actually been the winner had it yeah. actually been in the movie, but yeah. it was not. So I, I tend to agree with you. Just the the shock value of the way he says it is probably what people might remember and meme and parody a little bit. But it's interesting for you know in 300, that was a one liner heaven. There was a lot of good lines in that movie, and this one really didn't play that up. There really yeah. weren't a ton of you know big one liners, so there weren't a lot of choices. But I tend to agree with you. That's what people might remember the most most from this. So. Michael Keaton award for most memorable line to uh, to Ben Affleck for when I kill you and I will kill you. The next award, the Jennifer Lawrence award for cut me my check. You got to explain this one. I agree with you. You called it. It was a great <laughs> call. You got to explain where this is coming from. So Jennifer Lawrence, as you already know, was Mystique in the X-Men film franchise and she did great in the first film, but then the rest of the series, she sort of seemed uninterested and was there for the check. Uh, especially in that last film, she phoned it in. She was she was just there to, to, to get paid. And in this film, we have three nominees. You wanna list them? Sure. And the other thing for Jennifer Lawrence is her, they, for first class, they caught her before she really blew up. And so it felt like after she became Academy Award winner, Jeremy yeah. Lawrence, she kind of looked at her contractual <laughs> obligations and said, when am I done here? Oh, great. <laughs> Finally, in Dark Phoenix, you're going to impale me on a spike. <laughs> Excellent. I'm out. <laughs> so that's where this kind of came from. No, yeah. no disrespect to her talent. It's just, yeah, you can yeah. sort of see it and yeah, feel yeah, it in the yeah. performance. So, yeah. OK, so we got three pretty big name actors here who, in our opinion, might have been you know, here for the money a little bit. So number one is Harry Lennox as Martian Manhunter. I think this has been stoked a little bit by Lennox himself, pushing for the Manhunter film, pushing for Justice League two and three. There's a little yeah. bit of a whiff of, <laughs> I want some bags to be dropped here for my character. Word. So, so he's on the list. We also have J.K. Simmons as quite honestly, a very forgettable Commissioner Gordon. I think we've had some, you know, with Gary Oldman and now with Jeffrey Wright, potentially, we've had some, this character has really, and actually even the TV series, quite honestly, it's a different era, but but Ben McKenzie, I think was his name. This mm -hmm. character has been rendered pretty well. There wasn't a lot for JK to do in this movie. I don't know if there ever would have been a lot for him to do in this movie, but he basically was looking at pictures and then hanging out with the team once by the bat signal, and that was, and that it. was it. So yeah. JK Simmons in that. And then I put Willem Dafoe as well on this list. I think we both agree. Now, Willem Dafoe, this was more meant as a setup for the Volko that we got in the Aquaman feature film. Um, but he doesn't have a ton to do here. He also does not have the man bun yet, which <laughs> might have been an improvement, but he's yeah. not doing a lot. In the last image we get of him, he's just kind of standing on the beach watching Momoa drink alcohol in the back of a truck. So yeah. <laughs> Willem Dafoe, who's been nominated for Academy Award, Ten times maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, it it did seem like a little bit of a a little bit of a superfluous role to be in this. So those are the three: Lennox, Simmons, and Defoe. Pablo, who is getting the Jennifer Lawrence Award for Cut Me My Check? And the award goes to J. K. Simmons. I mean, there's really. I mean, his his Gordon was so forgettable. And he, it just seemed like he was just, just there. Like, not really, like, you know, it just wasn't a great performance. And we all know that J.K. Simmons is a great actor. He's gonna be, uh, he's gonna provide a voice acting for The Invincibles. Uh, but this role for him, just really, they could have gotten somebody else for this. They got J.K. Simmons and he did his thing and he got cut the check and... And we saw J.K. Simmons both then and now as J. Jonah Jameson. He was one of the best parts of the Sam Raimi original Spider-Man. He is back in that role now. And you that's J.K. Simmons in a yeah. comic book movie, you know, batting a thousand. This was not a lot. Like if we were doing an award for best embodiment of a character, he'd probably be up for that nomination. That's right. So cut me my check, J.K. That goes to him. Next award. All right, the next award is the Jack Nicholson Award for most insanely over-the-top performance. Now, this obviously is in honor of Jack's portrayal of the Joker in 1989, which was great. Actually, I think he was nominated for an Oscar, a real Oscar for that performance, if oh, I yeah? remember correctly. Um, and it was 
it's not the Joker from the comics, but I think he did it and hand it up so well that nobody cared. And so he yeah. got rave reviews for that performance, but it was over the top. I mean, it, yeah. whatever <laughs> else you might say, like every scene he is in, he is milking it to yeah. the knots until he's off the camera. So yeah, yeah. again, we, we, this wasn't actually a movie where I thought there were a ton of these, which I was a little surprised. I thought there'd be more to be quite honest, but there was one pretty clear nominee and we should do a breakdown of his performance. And it is Mr. Ezra Miller for Let's most get into it. over the top performance. I think Ezra Miller just tries to be too much, or I don't know if he was directed to do too much, but he just does too much to stand out in this film and really doesn't need to be. I think the best part of his film is when they're all surrounding um, or when they're all talking about resurrecting Superman. Other than that, his dialogue is just too quirky and he's just doing too much and saying too much. And it, 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 it just comes off as like, I don't wanna, I, could you just stop talking sort of situation? Yeah, I, you know, it's his stick on the comic side. It just always felt like he was trying too hard. Th that is a tough act. To pull off. There are certain actors, I think, who are very gifted. You think of like Kramer on Seinfeld, where the jittery kind of it works <laughs> and it feels very natural. This always felt like it was 10% too much on the volume every time he was in the character. And to your point, his best moments were when he was more understated, more serious, and more part of the team. And it, it this did not make me any more excited to see him in his standalone film. Yeah. And as it was evident in our breakdown of the film, we immediately went to his kind of intro origin scene as the one we most wanted to take out. I think in part, because we felt like we had enough of him throughout the rest of the film. So he was really going for it. And I even go to his running motion is even over the top. I mean, that yeah. dude is moving his arms and legs in a way that like, I get it, you're the flash, you're the yeah. fastest man alive. But yeah. even that felt like I'm gonna exaggerate Every gesture to sell this to you and when he's in the speed force at the end i can't hold this much longer <laughs> he, it was it was yeah. that's the line that's been used a thousand times he yeah. was really really putting yeah. it out there so yeah i think one of the one of the best scenes for him is when he arrives at the back gate for the first time he's like wow you know and he starts running around that's so that's you know that's that's something barry Allen would do yeah. Right. So that was okay, but everything else was just just not the. It's too much. Was, yeah, it was just too Going much. Going for it too much. That's all. Yeah. Uh, the next award. <laughs> you knew he was gonna. So when you say the name, because of the, what happened between this person and Zack Snyder leading up to this film, we had to have an award about this. So go ahead. <laughs> so this is the Richard Donner Award for weight. Wasn't that my scene? And there's only one scene, obviously, that we can talk about. Now, Richard Donner, first Superman 90 film. years old, Richard Donner. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a scene in Superman where I guess pretty much all of us would agree that's a little bit ridiculous, right? And this when, this is when um, the nuke, uh, um, exp you know, detonates in the, the, the San Andreas Fault and Superman does everything he can to save as many people as he can, as Superman usually does. Yeah. And Lois perishes, right? You get that brief moment of silence, get that scream, and then Superman goes off and flies around the Earth, which I think if you scientifically, if you look up the number as how fast the Earth rotates, is like that's it's pretty much <laughs> impossible, right? But he does reverse his time and everything, and, and he saves the day. So the only nominee for this, obviously, is Brian. It is Flash reversing time to save the world, and in fact, right down to the when he's speeding around the city, that looks an awful lot like Superman's effect of flying around the world 
he reverses time to literally change the outcome of events in the climactic scene. So it's not just that they do it, because it, as we said, this is one of Flash's powers, so they didn't make this up, but it's that they chose to use this device as the game changer in the final sequence. The other reason we had to have a Richard Donner award is because of course he directed Superman the movie, which remains one of the gold standards of this industry. And he had some strong words about certain types of portrayals of these characters, which seemed very thinly veiled, aimed shade at Zack Snyder and the Snyderverse ahead of this movie. So I found it very ironic that in the climactic scene, there was a device that looked an awful like a plot tool that yeah, Richard Donner yeah, had used yeah. 40 years ago. So that's why just as a sort of a, a laugh and a wink, we put the, the Richard Donner award in there for flash reversing time to save the world. Yes, 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 yes. That, that, when you sent that to me, I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, they did that. They did that. The next award. This the this award is called the Stan Lee Award for Best Cameo and Easter Egg. Uh, Brian, the nominees. Well, listen, I mean, the late great Stan Lee made cameos a thing in the MCU. There's no one else who could do cameos better. So, and no show about comic book adaptation would be complete without an acknowledgement to Stan Lee. So, we have three nominees and then a, a bonus. So, our three nominees: Sergei Constance as Zeus. As we said, I think, never seen this guy before, but the minute he showed up on screen, I was like, I literally went to the Wikipedia, I was like, who is that, is that guy? guy? He, he looks imposing. He doesn't have any lines other than, you know, just delivering the lightning, but he does it really well. I was like, I yeah, don't yeah, yeah. mind seeing this guy as a as something. I don't know yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zheng Pai as the Atom. So they don't acknowledge him as the Atom, but Ryan Choi becomes the Atom. And, and that clearly was meant to be that character. And so he would cut out of the theatrical version entirely. He actually has a, a part in this, like an actual part. So Zheng Kai is the Atom popping up. And the last is actually Zack Snyder himself. So when Lois Lane exits the cafe carrying the cups of coffee, you see the man himself with his trademark vest sitting at the counter. And apparently that coffee shop was his coffee shop of choice during the production of this movie. So that was sort of a genuine nod to that place. And so you see Zack Snyder on screen for the first time, I believe, in, in the Snyderverse as Lois comes out of the cafe. So those are the three nominees for the Stan Lee Award. So Pablo, who does the award go to? Uh, the award goes to uh, Mr. Zack Snyder, although I missed it. Uh, but because this is his thing, as Stan Lee, this is, you know, the Marvel, you know, the Marvel Universe is something he uh, gave us along with uh, Jack Kirby and, and, and Pop, uh, many others. Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder was the, 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 the creator of this version of the Justice League and this universe. So for him to be in it, um, I'm going to go back and see if I catch him. You know, it only is only right that he gets this award. Um, um, for Stan Lee. Now, there was one other cameo that we've talked about a little bit, but it kind of left a different taste, I know, especially in your mouth. So the anti-nominee <laughs> the Stan Lee Award was Harry Lennox as Martian Manhunter. I am now going to get out of the way and just let you well, say your piece on this. You've heard me say it before. First of all, none of the scenes that he was in there was required. They didn't need to be in it. They didn't make sense. And for him to show up, it's just that interaction between uh, Batman, I mean, uh, Bruce Wayne, was just weird. Like, I, I know you're Bruce Wayne, you're not afraid of anything, but I would certainly be on the defensive if someone like that shows up at my door. And then, why not ask like what i mean i would be upset like I, I i would go crazy like where were you and all of this that's been happening we've been through doomsday we've been through zod we've been through now um uh steppenwolf and you did not lift a finger you ordered a hit on is like that it was just for me it was underwhelming 
I didn't care for it whatsoever. I'm sorry, Hanley, and he's a great actor. Yeah, he's a great actor, and I know you. He's been, you know, wanting to do more films. That I don't want to see it. I, I'm done with the Martian Manhunter, and the fact that he says they call me Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I would have been happier if he said uh, John Jones or John Jones. He, he should have just said they. I'm known as John Jones. That I don't know why he said Martian, Martian Manhunter. It's like what? who knows you that? Who calls you that? Who calls you that? <laughs> you know, so that 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 just was for me was horrible. Anyway, <laughs> next award: the Crims Hensworth Award for most badass display of powers of superpowers. What is that in reference to? Um, uh, Infinity War. Um, Endgame. You know, when he first arrives in Infinity War at Wakanda, mm -hmm. that's one of the best moments. Like, if you watch, like, if you're sitting in the theaters and you're watching that scene, everybody's cheering. I'm pretty sure there's video out there of people just uh, uh, of showing that scene and showing the crowd reaction. And, and, and we want to do an award for that. So the nominees are... There's only two. So there is Henry Cavill, the return of Superman in the black suit and laying waste to Steppenwolf uh, with a little bit of honorable mention, his fight with the Justice League before that. And then there's Darkseid himself in Victor Stone's sort of version of the nightmare vision where we see Darkseid eliminating the Justice League using the Omega beams, comforting Superman when he's clearly got him under his control. So it's really between the two rivals, Superman and Darkseid, Henry Cavill and Ray Porter as Darkseid, and who is getting the Chris Hemsworth award? I don't. I forget the conversation that we had prior to and who would get this award, but I was just thinking about it. Like, sitting in the theaters and watching this, what would the crowd reaction be? Yeah. I thought, with Superman, we've seen a lot of what Superman can do. You would certainly get a crowd reaction of him arriving at the battle. But to see Darkseid use the Omega Beams, I think you would have gotten a reaction. The award goes to Darkseid. Just for his presence and and just seeing him do, and do those things and, and, and putting his hand on, on, on Superman's show, that's what Darkseid would do. And... But that Omega Beam, seeing that thing just come off of it, like that was, I was like, oh, snap. If I was sitting in the theaters, I would have a reaction. I think most people would. So he gets the award for dark, uh, for uh, most badass display of superpower. He does. But I will say, I will be forever, one thing I will be forever grateful for to Zach's work with Superman is that he does know how to put Superman's power on screen. I, I do love seeing it. And this this combo in a relatively short span of time was one of my favorites because we finally saw him use sort of his breath to break the ax. We see him use the heat vision at opportune times. And then he does the flying effects where he delivers sort of these super punches with that kind of force. And like, it's just something we haven't seen with modern effects on screen. And I think it's one of the strengths of his portrayal of Superman. So, and we thankfully did not have Superman screaming in this one. He actually is <laughs> Finally, just- except, except at the end, except the in the beginning, in the beginning he was. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I, and I, so I, I think it's like a 1A, 1B. I agree with you, Darkseid has done perfectly in this sequence and we've never seen it before. But you couldn't go wrong. This was one of the tightest displays. And I think you're right. The audience would have reacted to both. Uh, yeah. I think you would have gotten some cheers from both had this been in the theater. So Chris Hemsworth, most badass display of superpowers, Dark Side gets that one as well. All right, the next award is a little, little bit of a wink and a nod. The Paul Bettany Award. Now we've talked about this. Why a Paul Bettany Award? Because vision can't stop dying. <laughs> And he always seems to die with the world on the line in some ways. He did it twice in Infinity War alone. So we wanted to bring in a little bit of sci-fi fun here. So how many times can I die to prevent the, the end of the world? The Paul Bettany Award, there's only one nominee for this, and it is... Mr. Joe Moore. And as you recall, in Terminator <laughs> 2, <Yep. laughs> he does the same thing. 
This is the same guy, basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Very smart, intellectual, and uh, he uses tech. He uses tech, right? And yep. he realizes what he has to do in order to prevent what's to come. And he sacrifices himself, and you know he dies. And if the, Terminator Two was pretty hard to watch him. It was. It was. I was a tough watch. In brutal. Terminator 2. That's yeah. a brutal scene where he's yeah. holding the weight over. Oh my god! And he's Miles, taking his Miles, last he, breaths. His Miles Dyson is is excellent in that film. It's, yeah. it's a great portrayal. But like you said, he re- thirty years later, a he looks pretty much the same. Yeah, exactly. Right. Thirty Black years later, crack. he is aging incredibly well, and he <laughs> he pretty much is playing Miles Dyson in this movie, and it works great. So yeah. yeah. So and he does. He sacrifices himself to, in his mind, try to help prevent the end of the world again. Exactly. So. so Joe Morton gets that award. Joe Morton. Is okay. Yeah. All right. I got to introduce this one now. We, you've already done the rant, but I had to put this award on there. This is literally for you. So it is the Mark <laughs> Ruffalo Award. Yeah. And it is for the what the F did they do to my character in honor of your extreme dislike of Professor <laughs> Hulk? Yeah, in, in the Avenger, your least favorite character in the MCU, I do believe. And so you've already done the rant, but there's only one nominee for this, so so tie it off here. It's, it's Harry Lennox. Yeah. It's like again, where the hell were you, man? <laughs> it it's just like I if I get into a conversation where somebody tells me that he was one of the best parts, I'm gonna be like, yo, explain that to me, man. Explain how Martian Manthrow, just because he was there because he showed up, so what? He did not do a damn thing. I'm sorry. Martian Manhunter was the worst part of this film. One of the worst part of this film. So there it is. Mark yes. Ruffalo Award. <laughs> Mar- Martian Manhunter is getting a lot of... Uh, a I, I don't know, right? It's like... In this. Yeah, <laughs> he kind of is. Part. You got to put a pause button on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this was going to be a fun one. Um, yeah. This award, uh, the George Clooney Award for most cringe-worthy image or scene. The nominees. And this is in reference to George Clooney played Batman in Batman and Robin. He himself has been, had a great self-deprecating sense of humor about this role through the years and how forgettable it was and the nipples on the suit and all this <laughs> stuff that he will always own. But it is something people remember as good an actor and as accomplished an actor. It is part of that resume that people always do remember. And that's why we call it the thing that might stick with you, that cringeworthy image or scene. So the nominees are Flash's introduction to Diana, to Wonder Woman, uh, the first time they meet. And I will say, and I think you might agree, this was one of the scenes that I thought was a Josh Whedon scene that turned out to not be a Josh Whedon scene. It was actually in the movie. The second is actually related to this. It is Flash talking about Wonder Woman's love life in the graveyard, literally in Superman's <laughs> grave, saying, does she like younger guys? So that, that just creeped me out. I thought it was weird. I don't know why it was in the script. It made no sense. That was on there. So those first two are basically related. The third, I have to cook on this a little bit. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. generally like the effects because Zack Snyder's great with visual. The one thing that looked really fake and really hokey to me was when they, at the end, when Flash is reversing the reversing time, they zoom out and you see from a, a like a wide, almost panoramic shot of him moving in super slow mo, and it looks like an '80s video game to me. He's moving really fake, like you can just totally tell it's a computer character. The reversal of time on the screen looks very off to me. It just was like. Ah, like for a scene that otherwise I think was pretty tight with regard to the speed force. Yeah. I wish that could just stay zoomed in. I, it just looked, I don't know what happened there, whether it was just like they couldn't quite make the effects work because it was a pandemic or they didn't have enough time, but yeah. it didn't look tight. That was loose to me. I, I didn't I didn't care for that. And it kind of disrupted a couple, a little bit of the flow of that scene. So that's nominee number three. Go ahead. What's your what's your plan? I wanted to ask you, was it I mean I I got tired of seeing the blue lightning thing every time he did something. It was just mm-hmm. overdone every single time Flash was involved. I think it was just overdone. Did it, did it bother you? It did. 
I, you know, like I said, I liked the super speed force, like the one at the end where he's like beyond the speed of light and there's less lightning. It's more kind of him. That I like the most, but you're right. When he was, that's why, like when he was doing the Iris West save where it took forever for him to get there, that, <laughs> the amount of like lightning in that was- The was irony, crazy. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then even in the first fight with Steppenwolf, there's a lot of lightning inside that tunnel where they're fighting yeah. him. Yeah, I agree with you. The, 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 it, the baseline flash effect was a little much for me. Um, but this one in particular just stood out to me as like, for a, a director who's that skilled with visuals, it felt, I was like, you're better than that. Like you are yeah. better than that. And I, that felt like a sloppy shot. So that's number three. Number four, I have to talk about this. And I, so Ben Affleck, <laughs> I don't necessarily love all the decisions that were made about his character before he got it. I do think he executed what he was given pretty well. Yeah. Right? He's a pretty good Batman for the most part. But his Bruce Wayne boy stinks and I hate it. And I can't, I do not understand why Hollywood can't figure this out. When Bruce Wayne is Bruce Wayne, he would talk normal. Because he's trying not to draw attention to himself. Yeah, yeah. He's not going to whisper in this yeah, husky yeah. <laughs> tone all the time. Yeah, and yet yeah. you saw, like, Michael Keaton kind of did that a little bit, but it didn't feel as bad. This just felt really unnatural. Mm -hmm. He just is not my, I, I, I like a lot of things Ben Affleck does generally with the role, although I don't love how Batman is set up in this movie, but his Bruce Wayne voice really got to me over four hours. And I was just like, just talk like Ben Affleck. Yeah. It's fine. Just talk like Ben Affleck. Like, <laughs> the guy in the, Kevin Conroy, who does this in the animated series, does this far and away better than anyone else. He sounds normal when he's Bruce Wayne, and then he dials up the seriousness when he's Batman, but it feels natural. It's perfect. Just yeah. listen to him. That, yeah. Listen to him and do that. That's yeah, all I have. Yeah, yeah. So those are the nominees. We got Flash, two, Flash on Wonder Woman's Love Life, Flash Meeting Diana, the Flash zoomed out speed force effects and Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne voice. Who gets the George Clooney award? Before we get to the award, did you did you cringe when Batman was getting into the ship and he was talking to uh, Alfred? Like he was when he was getting into his uh, uh, plane and he's well, I forgot what he said, but he yelled it out. Did it for me? That was like that sounded. It sounded weird. It sounded cringeworthy to me when he was talking. Oh, like he, on faith, where he's like, "I'm doing it on faith." Yes, you mean exactly, that? exactly. That that yeah, part. That like part. Said, I just don't think Affleck saw Bruce Wayne's voice, and I wish yeah. they just told him, "Hey, just just be yourself." But you know, you can talk a little deeper, but just be your own normal voice. That's yeah, all. yeah. Fine. The award for most cringeworthy image or scene goes to. Flash introducing himself to Wonder Woman. That line has been done how many times in a comedy, in anything? It was just like, what? This is what you guys wrote for that? It just, it was just like cringeworthy. Couldn't Cringe believe it was in worthy. there. Yeah. The way the movie had gone to that point, I was like, there's no way that that scene is going to be in there because everything else related to Joss has been cut. And then I was like, oh, that was actually <laughs> in the real script. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, I think I probably didn't know what happened after five minutes after that because I was still, st still thinking about that line. <laughs> I'm like, what? Are they, they really... Yes, Flash Introduction to Wonder Woman gets the most cringeworthy uh, award, and George Clooney Award. Next award, Chris Evans Award for most iconic comic book image brought to screen. Nominees. So this is in reference to an end game where Captain America lifts Thor's hammer and wields it against Thanos, paying off one of the time-honored moments in the comics. It is visually stunning. They give Chris Evans a couple of incredible shots where he uses the hammer, leaps into the air, channels the lightning. So that's why we, that was the inspiration. For that was it, was, it was a true homage to great moments from the comics. So the nominees are number one, 
call it Steppenwolf's death scene. So kind of the, when, when Superman arrives and the heroes kind of team up to beat Steppenwolf up pretty good, leading to the sort of triple threat of he takes the trident or the quindent from behind, Superman super punches him and Diana cuts off his head and he flies through the boom tube. So that's sort of the idea of the league in tandem stopping the bad guy once and for all. So that's number one. Number two is uh, Dark Side versus Earth, sort of sort of his kind of battle with the forces of Earth. And then number three is Wonder Woman in action. So this could be the intro scene. It could be some of her one-on-one -on -one fights with Steppenwolf, but it's in general the how the how Wonder Woman is portrayed as an action hero in this. So Pablo, if you would, the envelope. Who is getting the Chris Evans Award for most iconic comic book image brought to screen? This would have to go to uh, Wonder Woman in action, man. That intro scene where she's deflecting these bullets and she's fighting these dudes was Wonder Woman, I think, at his best. I don't think I'll ever get that image of her in real time deflecting those bullets. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of slow motion in that. When she was, when they were shooting across trying to get people and she was just running across and just deflect, that was dope. That was dope to me. And her fighting them and kicking, you know, doing real, some real damage. Again, like we said before, she is a fierce warrior, and there was no better uh, portrayal of that uh, characteristic of Wonder Woman uh, that I've ever seen before. It's it, that was that was just great. Uh, so she, Wonder Woman, in action gets that award for the Chris Evans Award for most iconic. I totally agree with you, and I think it's, this was one of those scenes I wish I had never seen the theatrical version because I feel like if this had been the first time I had seen any element of that scene, I would have been like, "Whoa, that was dope. where are we going?" Because this <laughs> that is was incredible. Dope. Yeah, that set the I, that intro scene set the stage for the rest of the film for me. I think because of that high, obviously there were some lows throughout, but that uh, visual. Uh, and how well it was done set the stage for me for the rest of the, the, the film. Next award. Two awards to go, and they're they're probably the two biggest ones. So the Academy, when they end the Oscars, they save kind of the, the best actor, best actress for the yeah. end. They save best picture. So now we're into that phase. So our penultimate award is the Heath Ledger Award, and that is for most outstanding performance in a leading role. And that, of course, is in memory of Heath Ledger's unforgettable portrayal of the Joker in 2008's The Dark Knight, an award for which he did win the real Oscar. And that film and that role led to actual changes at the Academy Awards. They expanded the nominees for Best Picture because Dark Knight was not nominated in large part because of Heath Ledger's work. So the late Heath Ledger, most outstanding performance in a leading role. And you know, while there actually were some, some pretty good efforts in this movie, there is only one real nominee for this. And Pablo, it's time we talk about who? Um, we've said this in the past that this was going to be one of the better performances in this film and it certainly did not disappoint the award goes to mr ray fisher say what you want about his outside activities he was fantastic i think every scene he was in was watchable you believed every emotion that he was going through. That scene when he's like, sort of like limping towards his father and you see the tear drop, the, you know, that Ray Fisher did a fantastic job as a, a cyborg man. There was no better portrayal of a superhero in this film um in terms of performance uh, acting performance than ray fisher there's no question and this is a relatively new character a relatively new character to the justice league he probably had the hardest job because people that would come into this movie wouldn't really know who cyborg was in a lot of cases and yet he was given a, a central backbone role to this movie so he if you didn't buy him you weren't going to buy anything in this film. Yeah. 
And so from the minute he's on screen as Victor Stone to the moment, you know, kind of at the end where he's saving the world, he is given a really good arc and he runs with it. And when you get to the end where he kind of says like, I'm, I'm not broken and I'm not alone, I was pretty invested. Like I yeah. felt pretty, that was a pretty cathartic moment where he's kind of is inside the mother boxes is talking that. I cannot get over what happened to him in this film. I cannot get over how he could have been left on the cutting room floor like this. And I'm so, you know, of the reasons why it was great to see this film brought to life, this was probably 1A with anything related to Zack Snyder personally. This is probably 1A. I hope whatever happened with Ray Fisher between the studio, I hope it does not preclude him from having a career because watching this made me feel like this guy, this guy has real talent and it isn't just as side work. So Ray Fisher, well-deserved, most outstanding performance in a leading role, no question. Uh, he took it, took the ball start to finish and was fantastic as yeah. side work. Yeah, yeah. Our final award uh, is the Chadwick Boseman Award for Perseverance Through Adversity. There's only one nominee for and, this. And as a background for this, one of the amazing things that came out in the wake of Chadwick Boseman's passing was that he was battling the ailments all through making Black Panther and nobody knew. Kevin Feige didn't know he was not healthy until basically right before he passed. Yeah. And so when you think about the physical demands of bringing a character like a Black Panther to life, and the acting demands and the time and the travel and all that goes into making that happen to keep that quiet with as serious an illness as he had and give us the performance we were left with that's what that was the inspirational text i think for for creating this award and as you say there really is only one nominee and we mean it from the bottom of our hearts it is mr zach snyder uh if you think about all he went through um while doing this film, stepping away from it because he realized he did not want to have to fight to show his vision because he was getting so much, um, so much um, pushback from the studio. And to finally be given the, the opportunity to show his vision. Although, you know, we've said our piece in terms of how long this movie was and how long it shouldn't have, you know, that it didn't need to be this long. He still did what he, at the end, wanted to show to the fans. Um, the time it took him to get this done obviously was um, you know and especially if you see the, the the ending towards you know in memory of you know his his daughter uh, he did it you know it, it, think about how many years this has been in the making you know um, and to finally get the oppor opportunity to do it and, and deliver it is you know this this definitely is what you call perseverance to push through it all and 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 and, and get what you want to get done done so zach's not against this award yeah and i'll say i mean you, you and i are both parents and we both have girls as part of that never imagine what it would be like to lose a child um, let alone lose one in, in the way that he did and I think he would have been well within his rights to never look at or touch this movie again because that happened while it was going on and certainly with all of the flack that came along the way and came after and the way this went down and I would never have blamed him for saying, I don't want to ever go back to this again. So the fact that he did and delivered, I think about as good an output as we could have expected from the material that he had. And it certainly was a coherent vision. Again, we don't have to agree with every choice in order to respect 
that this is a vision of the world that he played out. I hope it brought him, you know, a bit of catharsis and closure and completion to see this up on screen, to see it received the way it's being received. I really hope it, you know, for him and, and his wife, I hope it does bring some of that, um, that healing that they were hoping for, because obviously as they sign off the movie, it's for Autumn and the song Hallelujah apparently was one of her favorite songs. So yeah, there, there is only one person who could, could win this award. And so, as we said, what, whatever we liked or didn't like about this movie, I think we are both very appreciative that it exists in its completed form. And whether or not we want to see it continue, I think the fans overall, Snyder, Snyder fans or not Snyder fans, we kind of won because we did get to see this finally start to finish. So yeah. congratulations to Zack Snyder for, for providing us with that. And uh, again, yeah, real heartfelt congratulations from little old us for the Chadwick Boseman Award for perseverance to adversity to complete Snyder Cut. We did it, Pablo. Yes, we did it. We finally here. We got it done. Uh, thank you to all of you guys for sticking with us through this uh, hour and a half, two hour show. Um, hey, the movie was four hours. This, this is only <laughs> yeah, this, this is a half an hour in like real time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you once again for joining us. Please remember to hit that like button, that subscribe button, um, that notification bell if you haven't done so already. Share it with your your friends. This really helps out um, the channel. If you, especially if you comment, let us know what you think in the comment section below about the Zack Snyder film, some of these um, these uh, Nerd Gen um, award winners. Um, and thank you for joining us. Next week, we'll be back with a, a full review of episode one and episode two of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which episode one was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, but we'll see you next week for our regular show uh, of the news and um some reviews and thank you for joining us once again brian thank you for doing this show for sticking with uh me on this on this on this uh show and we'll see you next week for sure this was fun <laughs>